Hello everybody once again, this is Aqua Kazoo. Welcome back to another Black Desert Online video. Today will be one of my first weekly uh, video update video, which I'll update you with some stuff that I've been doing for the past week. Basically the progression on my character on a weekly basis. That means that we will actually get a weekly video for Black Desert Online Southeast Asia every week. And basically I'll be sharing with you, aside from my progression, some of the, you know, tips and tricks that I've learned over the week as well as some of the frequently asked questions uh, on my stream or on my channel as well so let's jump straight into it over here okay so uh, in terms of contribution points and energy wise I've gone up to 179 energy and 155 contribution points for the huge jump in energy basically what I've done so far is my entire Medea Black Spirit main quest as well as completing almost all if not all the areas that you can explore that's available in the game right now minus some of the you know some of the islands that you can take a boat out for or something like that not too sure if you can explore the islands here yet but if not media fully explored the for the areas that you can actually go and the areas that you can't go you'll be blocked like by like a invisible wall right and maybe here i didn't explore something i'm not too sure but to do this exploration all you need to do is to go to somethinglovely.net slash bdo links in the description below and you'll know exactly where to find all the notes like you can right click on the map and then you just ride there on your horse or you get off at somewhere safe and you know personally move your character over there you can even see the location of the node npc but just bear in mind that finding the node management npc doesn't mean that the node is discovered so you kind of still need to run around on some of the major landmarks and be like ring or you have discovered this area to actually show the node on the map if i'm not wrong so that's what I've done in terms of progression so far for CP as I mentioned just now uh, not media quest I've not done any of the media's uh, daily quests for the matter but I've done all the uh, main quests like if you open your quest right your main quest I've done all the media ones which means uh, I've unlocked I would say I've unlocked I've done the media uh, black spirit quest there's some bosses that you kill yeah, but they were like the nerf version of the bosses but for the most part i've done my media a black spirit quest and that helped push me to 155 contribution points aside from the fact that i've done all my calfion dailies you know uh, like this one as well make sure you do them the aggressive mantras uh, you go under recurring level 45 calfion calfion contribution and you scroll down to aggressive mantras come my sweet revenge rufum's disturbance operation and make a mob 200 contribution points each and if you combine it with the 2000 plus contribution points uh contribution exp you can get from the daily care farm missions you're looking at 2.8k every day so very very good for steady contribution exp progression all right so next thing i'm going to talk about is my notes right what if i spend my cp on you can see i only have one contribution point left which means i spent all the new cp that i have learned so i'll be sharing with you that as well so uh basically more additions to what i'm trying to achieve i've gotten more con notes uh for because they are grain type of materials so for more beer making two con notes over here from Bratali farm which you would have if you took the potato and the chicken meat and egg right and it connects all the way here you do have to go through marino farm yep to get it and this is also nice if you want to make a uh, fishing rod you need monk's branch right so forest of seclusion we have maple timber and a chance to proc uh, Monk's branch as well. I have a professional goblin worker over there. And the worker I've sent is from Heido. So one thing that people don't know is that uh, Valia has very limited lodging, you can see. All three uh, maxed out. So two workers there, two workers there, and one worker. So I think it's two plus two plus one. So you need to have five workers from Valia. And I mentioned in my first video, for those who didn't watch it, um, you want to use your workers from Valia on your east. So your Awas Hill, your Flint Flintel Farm, your maybe Bartelli Farm, right? So these will take up like one, two, three, four, and maybe one potato here, right? For your log here. For your wait, one, two, three, four, five, yeah. So one, two, three, four, five will be in Valia. Your West Valia, you'll use Ovia workers, right? So if you're not taking grapes like me. You can just go straight for coastal cliff, coastal cave, and for me, I used uh, two workers from Ovia for my Tuscany farm for the corn, and this one is actually from Heido. This uh, goblin is from Heido, 
and that's why I connected my Hydro through Forest of Plunder. If you want to get Sunrise Herb, which is also needed for crafting certain items as well as the Ash Timber and Spirits Leaf, it costs more CP to go through here to go to Valia. But if you're gonna take the uh, Sunrise Herb note, so you can get the Valeo's Forest as well. If not, go through Forest of Plunder like me, it's only one CP, I believe, and you can connect your Valia through the Hydro's Pass to Northern Guard Camp and to Hydro. Alright. So other few additions that I did not mention in my first, the you know the level 50, what to do at level 50 video, which I talked a little bit about my notes, is a uh, glitch. You can go for this one. Iron ore, rough mark crystals from Glitch. Also from Kaplan, right? Kaplan, you can go for the Kaplan quarry for coal and power of crevice. Uh, coal is for making a steel, and power of crevice is needed for crafting of some, uh, some functional clothes. If I'm not wrong, and last but not the least, uh, I have one over here. This one is very very expensive on CP six CP, uh, to actually get this one. Just to get a uh, burst river head, but you need the powder of earth to craft the cook's clothes, a silver embroidered uh, cook's clothes, which I'm working on right now, which is what I'm going to be showing you where I'm going to spend my CP. So, for cook's clothes, I believe it's Hydro, how you craft, uh, like you know, craftsmen's or functional uh, armor clothes, is via the costume mail. And Hydro has one over here. So, this one is the least CP for me because I actually bought the storage on the you know, 7 4. I believe if you Google there's like a another flaw that I recommend but whichever fits the setup that you have so far right. So for me it's Hydro uh, 7 4 second floor and you don't need level 2 you just need level 1 but you can upgrade it to level 2 anyway if you want to craft some costumes and stuff but in any case uh, silver embroidered cook's clothes right. You need powder of earth you need 10 of those and you need cotton fabric which brings us to our next two notes or you can just get one for now if you are CP tight if you are tight on CP uh, Tariff which is the new media area that's been released right from Tariff or uh, you got the Kasula farm very good uh, cotton like I'm only using this one and I've gotten about 2000 ish cotton I've, I've actually uh, bought it to Hilo you can see Yep, I have made a lot of them into where's my yep, made a lot of them the cotton fabric. So I still have 980 cotton to uh, heat and then later on to grind into cotton fabric. So when you heat the cotton you get cotton yarn, right? And then I believe it's 10 cotton yarn for one cotton fabric, not too sure. But I don't really want to do this uh, until you get your processing to professional two or three so that you get more procs, more yields per grinding of the cotton yarn. And it's actually worth quite a little bit for cotton yarn. It's 21,000 right now and about 2,400 has been sold before at uh, around 19,000. So that's around 50 mil worth of cotton fabric being sold. Price seems to be going down here, 17,000 for the cheapest one. In any case, if you don't want to make cooked clothes like me, you might want to consider putting some CP into getting cotton. I, I believe. There are people who wants to buy them off straight from the market as well. But you need to spend time uh, processing and if you need to level processing, why not, right? If you are bored of processing, you know, uh, flax or you are bored of processing iron ore or copper ore, which is why you take all the notes earlier on to get processing to professional too or higher. Uh, those are nice as well. And I think for notes, uh, that's about it. Yep. The rest are the same. I think I talked about lynch farm ruins for Trace of Savagery, not really sure how good it is actually to be honest, I just saw a video and the guy took it, yeah. But I think Trace of Savagery and Trace of Hunting is used for certain things. And the rest of the things that you get, like the imp stuff, I think it's just supposed to NPC. Yeah, we're just supposed to NPC these things for some silver, but what you want here is the Trace of Savagery and Trace of Hunting. Which, you know, you need to prop to actually get if I'm not wrong. So, any last things? Mm, not too sure if I talked about Lumberjacks recipe, I think I did in the previous video. So I got this one as well. Oh yeah, so if you want to get more uh, timber in that sense, right? You can actually grab Korean Forest. At the bottom here, you can get fur timber, which is also needed for crafting of certain items. I remember that I needed. I think it's one of those fishing rods if I'm not wrong. And also what's good here is the bloody tree knot. Another very useful crafting item, which as of now I do not know what it's uh, used for, but 
basically two CP, right? One to get the tree and forest and one to grab the node. And if you are doing abandoned monastery farming like me for a mark of shadows, which I just got another four after two hours again. I'm still at level five. I'm actually investing into mains hideout now. Over here. Yep. On the way to level five. Uh so that I can try to farm the shouts, uh gladiator necklace and the belt. I don't really need the belt, I need a necklace, but the belt's a bonus if I get it anyways. You can also do uh Wanderer's Rogue Stand. I'm probably going to try both. Like, I'll do level 5 over there and level 5 over here, but you know, one step at a time. And I believe the right place to actually invest should be like Eldric, Eldric Shrine, or you know, if you are really regate right now, you can actually invest into uh, Sao Sans, right? Shout out to Tank Dynasty here for killing me and my friends when we're doing good quests for the fun. Yeah, it was really fun, by the way. Shout out to Tank Dynasty. When we went to Calpheon to do. We had the audacity to take a media guild quest and we were greeted with 1.8k Sao Sans kills. And just bear in mind that I'm quote unquote the most geared uh, character in my guild. And yeah, my guild members are close but not that close. And I have 293 gear score right now. Recommended AP for Sao Sans is 130, I think, as a warrior. With full prior accessories, I'll never be able to hit that. I'll only hit 125. If I want to hit 130, I need to get some of my accessories to duo, which is why we bring to the next gear update, right? I've not talked about my gears yet. So right now, my gears, uh, I have used weapon reform stones for my longsword, which was plus 15 in the previous video, and my shield as well. So I have the extra down attack, extra damage plus one. Pretty nice because we knock down a lot with our ground smash and then you just follow up with uh, spinning slash right so the extra down attack is good because there's actually a down attack uh, damage I mean crystal but that means that you don't have to actually add that crystal now so it's quite nice but ultimately you want to get the ultimate form of your vanguard shield same for your urea and how do you actually do that including for your armors right you see people walking around with like ultimate gruni plus 15 armors and you're like how, how did they get the ultimate you use this thing called uh, reform stones, all right? There's actually something called ultimate reform stones which you can craft in the future. You need 10 great tree, uh, you know, weapon or armor reform stones depending on what you want to craft to actually craft the ultimate reform stone. But the materials that you need, I believe, which is black crystal, uh, is not available now or something. And you don't actually see people sell it on the market. So I believe it does not exist. If it does, uh, just let me know that I'm wrong. But as of now, you don't see people selling ultimate reform stones. Yep. But if, if not, it's just RNG, right? You have a small chance of upgrading into ultimate form when you're using a weapon reform stone. Just bear in mind that when you're blue, you can actually drop to green uh, grade again. Just bear that in mind. It doesn't assure that you're always at the, what we call the blue grade or the scaled grade in that sense. And you can also use that for all your armor. So once you're done getting all your shit, all your equipment to plus 15, you know, and you can't really try to pry your accessories yet, you're still doing your boss scrolls, right? Uh, then you can start using your hunter seal to exchange for reform scrolls. Which brings us to one of the frequently asked questions, right? Anyway, let's just talk about my gears first before I go to that. So I have two pry sharings. I'm working on my last Mark of Shadow. I have a pry, a belt of shouts, the gladiator. And I'm working on getting the uh, necklace of uh, shouts of the gladiator for pry as well. So, yep, and then maybe after that I'll try and get a dual witch sharing kind of stuff, step by step, you know. And in any case, what you'll be asking for most players, a great uh, question that's always asked to me is, how do I get so many weapon and armor stones? You can see right now, I have 69 armor and 53 weapon stones, which obviously to the people that really have a lot of those, this is not a huge number, this is probably enough to get like maybe 15 to 20 fill stacks if you're doing fill stacking with the rebluff uh, gear kind of thing which I'll talk about as well. But basically, the most reliable way to get this amount of uh, armor and piston is true, true boss scrolling. But if you are still starting out, there's actually, I'll post a screenshot on screen right now, there's actually a, a, a black spirit quest called the sharper weapons or something, which will give you one to two stones at first. And then when you have done the entire quest line, you will unlock uh, another quest line called uh, man, many makes a pickle or pickle something uh, many make a pickle or something like that and it will give you 5 armor sorry 5 weapon and 10 armor stones for the first 3 parts of the quest and the 4th part it will give you 
I think it's 15, 10 or 10, 15. Basically, a lot of weapon and armor skins when you go through the entire sharper weapon quest line and then many make a pickle and something make a quest. Again, the screenshot will be there. So you can complete the entire quest line to get a nice, uh, you know, nice set of armor and weapon stones. And I believe that quest line gives you a decent amount of hunter seals as well. Which brings me to the next question which people will ask is how do you actually get so many I want this this is not actually a lot how do you get a, a decent how do I put it decent a steady flow of uh, boss scrolls right for those who do not know what this is uh, you would you might have picked up an item known as the ancient relic shot let me see if I have any in my warehouse uh, over at Heidel or Calfion hang on one moment so, yeah, this one, right? So if you have five of the Ancient Relic Shards, you can form the Ancient Relic Shards. You know, you have to turn off Auto Arrange to arrange them in a plus sign, like, you know, plus sign. And you will see a plus sign again at the bottom right of the top uh, Ancient Relic Shard. And it will, you can press on it and you will combine to an uh, Ancient Relic Boss Scroll, which is the one over here, right? And... The next question you'll ask is how do you reliably get a lot of ancient relic uh, shards that is not from grinding? You can actually get those by grinding around uh, Calfion uh, areas, which is, uh, you know, Manshas, Rufum, Treants, any of those. Uh, the Unfortunately, the Monastery, Abandoned Monastery mobs, which is the Black Knights or the Shadow Knights, they don't drop ancient relic shards, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, they don't. I grind there and I didn't see them in my loot table, so I don't believe they drop. But Rufums, Benshas, Treants, they all drop the ancient relic shots, including giants as well over here and also the Hexay Sanctuary. So the level 45 plus onwards, I think you can start to see ancient uh, relic shots drop. So if you don't want to grind and you want to get a reliable supply during your AFK hours, all you need to do is to do fishing, what you call AFK fishing. And AFK fishing is one of the most reliable way to actually be able to get ancient relic boss shots ideally you want to fish at hydro like for example if you are new to it and you're still using a normal fishing rod just go hydro and you know just outside the storage in this area you can just drop your, your fishing rod in and you can fish in about two hours or one half hours to two hours of afk fishing even if you're a beginner one all right you'll get anything between three ancient relic shots to six depending on your rng and uh depending on how Made how much durability your, your fishing rod has, but the, the one that you can buy from the NPC, uh, Silen, you can actually last for about one and a half hours, two hours if your fishing you know skill is level zero, All right? But if you have if you're in a guild like me and we have fishing skill plus two, and usually if I AFK fish, I'll use a Balanos a meal that will give me another plus two. So right now I have an Ethereal fishing rod plus 3 that has 80 durability and that will be able to last me for I believe 5 hours ish because when I wake up my fishing rod is actually uh the durability is all gone right you also need to make sure that you have a decent amount of uh, inventory space I bought inventory space by the way I bought 16 slots but if you're just using a normal fishing rod uh, my friend Cupid is doing it he's still able to get 5 to 6 ancient relic shots per you know his sleeping hour 6 hours before he wakes up to go to school that kind of stuff so it's still worth doing, just make sure that I believe you need at least I would say two and a half rows to be safe. And also when you AFK fish, uh how do you AFK fish, right? Just go there with your rod and press the base bar. If the the bait when I mean the rod goes in, right? You know, and it's floating and your rod didn't come back to you, like it didn't fly back to you, then that means your AFK fishing. Just leave it there and it's AFK fishing, okay? So all you need to do is find a body of water and just press the base bar. Again, Heidel, if you want to farm ancient relic shards because you're not interested in the fish that you get. Uh, Valia, if you want to make money from fishing, I think. And I believe if you want like abundance, uh, some of the rarer areas, for example, over here right now in Tarif, if you're fishing over here, the because a lot of people are not fishing here right now, it's actually abundance. I'm actually going to test it tonight to see if it's better to fish at Tarif compared to Heidel. So I'll let you know in the next week's video, I guess. But... EFK fishing is a good source of ancient relic shots. I actually fish every night since four or five days ago and that's how I'm able to get a healthy supply of ancient relic crystal summon scrolls. I actually did three scrolls today so I actually have seven scrolls and yeah. 
when you do boss scrolls, okay, so the next part, right, is what are the scrolls for? What are the best way to do boss scrolls? Uh, right now, I'm actually recording this at 7 a.m. I have not slept yet, slept yet since my stream. Uh, because I was grinding out of shadows. Let me try to scroll up. Uh, there we go. Let's see, look for one more. Uh, also in Captain Scroll, must have scroll, right? So you will see people asking for boss scrolls party. Let me find another one. The same guy. Yep, this guy bans look for party. So you can actually find people to do uh, boss runs. There we go. I found the ancient relic one. A legendary uh, Hopia. Ancient relic crystal summon scroll. Look for more 5x. That means he's, look he's looking for a bunch of people that have 5 scrolls to party up and run the scrolls. So you'll be asking like, why do you want to party up, right? So the way the boss scroll loots work is that you can actually loot your party member's boss loot. When you actually uh, use the scroll, you actually receive a quest. You can see when this summon scroll is used, the co-op ancient relic quest, crystal quest, will automatically be accepted. So you'll actually get quest reward that will give you some some boss bundle kind of thing. You know? If you actually uh, watch the notification over here, sometimes you'll see people get witch sharing by opening the uh, Heavy Maria bundle, right? So the witch uh, boss scroll is a weekly boss scroll quest that you can do that I'll talk about after the ancient relic boss scrolls but basically if you have five scrolls and you party with five other people or rather four other people with five scrolls you are basically able to loot the boss 25 times because each member has five scrolls so five themselves 25 right and that's excluding the uh bundle loots that you get which you'll get in sets of five right and when you open those bundles they can give you hunter seals and when you are doing the ancient relic crystal summon scroll boss run you can also get memory fragment so memory fragment is worth 400k right now uh you're recommended not to sell them if you want to use them for certain things like for example i use five of them for my ethereal fishing rod because I'm, I'm done camping to buy fishing rods on the marketplace because some people just need the rod to at least get plus zero right i think at plus zero is 50 durability and every time you you enhance it it's plus 10 so mine is plus three that's why it's 80 durability so i didn't want to camp for another rod to restore my if you're a fishing rod from 70 to 80 durability and yeah so i just use five memory fragment which to some people is like oh my goodness you just wasted five memory fragment but if you do boss scrolls every day consistently until memory fragments is used for your boss set in the future which is probably out in the next couple of weeks i think or maybe longer who knows uh then you will need memory fragments you basically want to save memory fragments for uh equipment that are important right and unfortunately for memory fragments, it's one durability recovery for yellow uh, equipment. Blue is two, so artisan, I mean artisan. The inferior rod needed five memory fragments to restore 10 durability FYI. So just bear that in mind, okay? So save your memory fragments, don't sell them. They'll be very valuable in the future. But if you want to use them for certain unique situations like mine, where you just want to get a inferior rod 80 durability, I think it's justified, so it's up to you for as long as you know that you can get more memory fragments from boss scroll hunting. Alright, so fish for your ancient relic scroll shards. I mean your ancient relic shards to make the scroll and you get a healthy uh base of boss scrolls to hunt, which which will give you hunter seals, right? So twenty five scrolls means at least twenty five hunter seal. Sometimes you don't get hunter seal or memory fragment when you get the when you kill the boss for the loot, but sometimes you get two and if you couple it with your boss quest bundle reward at the very least 25. I did uh, 3 times 4 scrolls today with my guild uh, guildmates and I got 33. So usually when I finish a 5 times 5 boss one, I get around 40 to 54 hunter seals. And then you can exchange for weapon and armor stones if you want to get your, your stuff to plus 15 for your armors or for weapon stones you can need a weapon to get a plus 15. And once you're done with those you can start changing for weapon and farm stones. Alright so basically boss scroll hunting is really nice. So this boss scroll, the Auto M Captain Summon Scroll, is basically a daily boss scroll that you get every day by doing your Black Spirit daily boss scroll quest, which involves you killing 20 giants for Calfion and you'll get this. So you know save up for like you know five. Because it, it expires in six days, right? So you save up about five and then you know find guildmates or you can just basically uh type in server chat, look for four more. Uh, alter in how many scrolls. I usually recommend people to do it at 3, especially for the Ancient Relic Crystal Summon Scrolls because this boss run is quite dry. It's basically 3 waves of uh, bosses and imagine 3 waves of bosses which has like a 5 second summoning cooldown time kind of thing like between each wave is 5 seconds. 
So it's 3 times 75, I mean 3 times 25 is 75 times 3. So you can do the math, it will take a while to do all 5 scrolls or all 25 scrolls in that sense. So usually I like to do at 3 but it depends on my gimmicks. Uh, some people have 5, then we just do 5, right? So just remember to party up when you're doing boss scrolls. Not because it's hard to do, it's just that you just get way more loot. So party up, do your boss scrolls, very important. What else do I have to talk about? Alright, I think final is uh, some tips and tricks that I learned uh, for the past week in uh, Black Desert Online Southeast Asia. Yep. So past, like some of the tips and tricks that I learned. First one, very important. Some of you will probably know it. You're like, ha ha, Kazoo, you're so dumb, you didn't know this. It's Marketplace uh, Notice. Okay, you can't really see it right now because I'm not actually at the Marketplace right now. But when you go to the Marketplace at the bottom right, you'll notice a tab called Notifications, right? So you also have your favorites list. Your favorites list function is just basically helps you get to the page where you want to buy certain things, right? You see, you click here. This one you probably already know because it's like, whoa, so obvious over here, right? So you notice there's something called notice over here. And my like if I want to buy a pride rich earring, which I don't need to because I got two right now. Oh you can click this, right? So it says earring notification registration complete. So what this what this does, let me try to find something that that people always put into the yeah let's see let's say bearer swing hopefully we get a proc at the bottom right okay but basically when you do this uh, at the bottom right of your screen where my webcam is whenever someone registers an item okay it may not be like you know right now you can see oh necklace of shouts 12.5 it may not be that the case whenever someone registers an item to the to the marketplace you will see a notification a box will pop up at the bottom right and tell you uh, so and so item has been registered to the marketplace at this time and in the most recent patch they have fixed for non pro items to appear in the marketplace at 15 minutes so if you see for example a so and so item is registered at you know 7 30 a.m right so you can start camping for the item at 7 uh, 44 a.m just in case you know you miss time a little bit you just want to be there early instead of late right because you do not know which uh, part of the 15 minute that you'll see the said item pop up so you want to camp one minute earlier but basically take note of the time and start camping 14 minutes later right so it's very very useful because there are certain items that don't show up in the system notification on the left but you want to be notified when it is uh, put into the marketplace for example if you want uh, ethereal rods like you know a certain fishing rod that you are camping for and it's you know, highly demanded for you can click on the ethereal rod and you click into this mine is already registered because I was camping for it in that sense so whenever someone registers a ethereal rod to the marketplace you will see a pop up at the bottom right and you will see the time as well and you'll be able to camp for the item more reliably than you know sometimes because those items are very cheap they don't show up in the system queue because of how cheap they are so it's very useful for if you are camping certain uh, materials, for example, I believe uh, pure iron crystals. Pure iron crystals are highly demanded. Yeah, you can see it's not even available. And because pure iron crystals are needed to craft uh, ethereal rods, by the way, you need five of them for one. So, if you want to know whenever a pure iron crystal is not uh, is put into the marketplace, you just click on it, put it in the notice, and it will show up at the bottom right whenever anybody registers a pure iron crystal. It's very very useful. A trick and tip that I didn't know until like three or four days ago. That's what that allowed me to be camping. Yeah, about five days ago, I guess. Like two or two or three days after official release, then I realized that you can actually use the notice function. So I never knew that this was like that good. That like, it will actually show up window on the bottom right. And if you want like more convenience, whichever item that you are really looking really looking for, and you want to access it easily instead of like you know going through going through all the tabs, just put it into your favorites list. So you can click on it and it will just drop, it will bring you there straight away, right? So that's one tip, I guess. And I think that's about it for, for this video. I talked about my gear, I talked about my notes, I talked about my progression, reform stones, uh, boss scrolls, how I get boss scrolls, how I get hunter seals, trading tips. I think that's about it. Close to 30 minute video, I think. Not too long, but not too short either. Hopefully detailed enough for all of you 
to see uh, my progression in the game so far. As always, you know, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I have a Discord community. Check it out. Links in the description below. Uh, I stream every day. Twitch.tv slash Kazuo Thanks for watching once again. God bless. And I'll see you guys and girls in the next one. Take care and bye-bye.